first, there would be a wide shot of an empty road, the sound of strange birds, the wind, a span of time spent by the editor trusting nothingness. Then, just when we're uncomfortable, Michael. <coughs> You will not find this street on a map. It leads from nowhere to nowhere. No one knows who paved it, but everyone has a theory. Aliens. Really? Aliens with paving equipment? I promise you. I'll show you the interview notes. Or a drunken paver. <laughs> who drove on even when he reached the sea, and now, full fathom five, he lies. Or an angry animal god, eating its way across our industrialized wilderness, and shitting our remains. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that one has several adherents. <laughs> on a road like this, you feel infinite, but may well be dead, or both. The shot has returned to the road, but begun to pan to the side, where it finds a building that is indescribably cliched in its aptness to the desolate landscape. It is ugly. It is empty. Its aims were small if it ever served a purpose, and of course, it has a loading dock. Somewhere in the frame is something. A bundle? A dead animal? A body part that is placed in such a way as to nudge reaction, but not call attention to itself. Okay, so suddenly the shot includes a man snapping vigorously while he also examines the building. It is the devil. We cannot see what he is eating. He says, Maybe the road is part of an asphalt crop circle. The devil vanishes. Impressive. And yet this unmarked and unremarked street was the boyhood home of one of the most influential and misunderstood philosophers of our or any time. Those are the pearls that were his eyes. <laughs> uh, no. But I'll think about that. Does that match any of your footage? T.S. Eliot is an interesting source, so, you know, if there's some connection. It's a tempest. Wait a minute. You haven't seen the footage yet? Not yet. <laughs> Just hang on. What I have after of our or any time is that we go to blackout, still with the wind, and then the titles. Farewell, Happy Fields, a documentary study of the Prince of Darkness, and so on. And then, under the credits, one more shot of the road with the unnamed object. A bundle? A dead animal? A body part? Somewhere different than before, as if it had moved itself in a spasm of life force unsuited to its material nature. I don't have that. Uh, do I say that? A spasm of life force? I've got, if you set out. That's right. Read that. And this takes us here to your footage. My home movie. <clears throat> uh, if you set out to design a place more toxic to the human spirit, you would almost certainly fail. For a young man hoping to make his mark on the world, it was, at best, a challenging environment. Had he been a weaker person, a hopeless environment. What'd you do today? I... got him up, made him breakfast, he ate in the dining room, I ate in here. Watched a couple shows. I took a gigantic dump. And? And what? You took him to the doctor? No. No. I, I brought it up to him. Look, I talked to him. I, I, I brought it up to him. I one fucking thing today, and that was to take our son to the doctor. I know. I know you did. 
And when I told him we were gonna go, I went upstairs, I said, hey buddy, we're gonna go to the doctor today. And he said, no. I'm not pushing that. He gets that at him and he gets that crazy shit starts rattling in the room or I'm not touching. Have you forgotten that he melted my hand? Oh, I'm, like that. I'm not touching Put him. on the oven mitts, take the kid out to the station wagon and throw him in the back and take him to the doctor. You wanna, you wanna put on the oven mitts and throw him in the car? That's no. Fine. I don't know that he's not gonna burn through the oven mitts. Well, they're thick oven mitts. I you put him on there. No, you, you no. Put him on I asked you to do something and you didn't do it. You don't want to I do it yourself. This is you asked me to do something. Wow, I kind of liked it. That... No, 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 not crap filmmaking. Nonsense. That... What? Richard, this is crap. How would you know? Were you there? Jacob, please. I'm sorry about it. I know this is a bad start, but I can assure you, I can. Um, can you? Excuse me, sir. Did you just summon me with your fingers? More importantly, did you just call him sir? I couldn't get your attention. Wait, sorry. It is rather a fix trying to work out what to call you. I mean, I, I had to eat my eggs plain this morning. Because he was sitting this side of the salt. Did you say pass the salt? He did. He even said please. You ignore him. I even said, please don't turn me into salt. I didn't do the pillar of salt. That did. So what should we call you? The devil is awkward. The devil, would you please pass the salt? <laughs> um, Beelzebub? Beelzebub. Beelzebub, please pass the salt. Mm. Bubba. Beelzebub. Oh, please, don't call our guest our subject, Bielsa, Bubba. I told Richard when we met that a reasonably accurate name would be the supreme appetite of pandemonium. See, there's so much to learn. Let's try to keep our minds really open here. There's obviously going to be a lot we don't know, even about things we thought we knew. It still doesn't solve the practical problem. I mean, uh, may I have the salt supreme appetite of panda, my man? Uh, hey, it shortens quite nicely to sap. I am done with this conversation. I will respond to whatever you call me as long as it is your intention to call me, but leave with you the issue of whether you have made a prudent choice of what to call me. Satan! How about that one? Huh? Shorts, familiar, not like Mollick and Mammon and those other fellows. <laughs> Mollick and Mammon? Where do you come up with this? The hell oh, was this billowing oh, pink cloth? I, I never told you about this. It doesn't sound familiar. Adam, and who are you? Friend, uh, Satan's, I played Mammon. The word doesn't apply. But I thought we. Oh, friend, gotcha. No friends for you. What do you call each other? My tempter acquaintances? <laughs> Bunch of infernal Victorians. The point is, the story we're being told, and so the story we'll be telling, is a lie. What I just said was absolutely true. The footage, the footage, Richard, this nonsense about having parents and a childhood and a station away. I really don't see how you would know that. What? <laughs> there are countless cultural references to the devil, to him, to Satan, before anyone got in a car, much less a station wagon. And anyway, who are his parents? Satan doesn't have parents. I've long since stopped making the self-created argument. I certainly don't need you to help me grow violent. Those aren't the only two pertinent arguments, and this project is going to take a long damn time if you insist on chopping logic with Jake. Let's... Step out of the room. I don't need to be protected by you, thanks. Let's step out of the room. I'll go get coffee. I won't. Just say it here. No. If you want me to answer you, come outside. Don't you want to know what they're saying? No. It's probably about you. Of course it's about me. They left before dessert. Dessert? <laughs> what could be tastier than milksing your own father? My school days. 
You never went to school, did you? Of course. <laughs> How's that? Why would you need to study algebra? The footage shows a classroom reeking of nostalgia. Felt ducks on a board, permanently adding up to that orbital number of ten tiny rows of desks. The gestalt of which no human can withstand and instead inhabits two times at once, most unproductively, most prone to revisionism, most amazed by things which are not truly significant. So I take it they didn't teach you how to pass a sentence? And I would have given you this singular narration. His formal education began here, but in many ways it was too late. The first day he walked into this room, he brought with him a personal philosophy that had been formed by his precocious and prodigious capacity for deconstructing myths and systems. A philosophy that made it impossible for him to keep quiet, even in the most elementary classes. And then a close shot of my math homework. Two plus two equals... What does that say? Two plus two equals they cannot occupy the same space without fighting. The equation as stated is unsolvable, because it does not indicate whether the twos want to be added together, or what resources each has to prevent them being summoned against their will. I successfully defended my thesis to the teacher. The best grade I ever got. Well, I imagine all of your grades were pretty high. Pass me or I damn you, eh? Then why would I go to school? Did you go to prom and things like that? Very calm. Tasted like chicken. Did you ask her or did she ask you? Oh, Eve had to be offered the apple after all. <laughs> hey, what about this fruit? <laughs> Cajole, Weedle, Flirt. You're the only girl I've ever offered this fruit to. You couldn't count on her to stride up and take the damn thing. No sound? I prefer that. Keeps your focus where it belongs. Prom footage. Prom? Jacob. So, why'd you like her? Who wouldn't? She was great with irony. Was she your girlfriend? No, no. Late in the evening, I overheard her saying that up close I smelled like her dog's ass. At graduation, when they called my name, she and her friends began to gawk. You see, my isolation is not of my own making. Look, Richard, I know, I understand. I'm really let all around the garden path. The garden? How old fashioned. What do you mean? Very few people see. Me's me, Satan. What do I mean? Me and I, me and I. Me, I, me, I, me, I. Do you two need to go back out in the hallway and have a little chat? This is true, Richard. The devil, Satan, the tempter in the desert, the snake in the garden, the Judean Christian antagonist, he didn't have a child. Look, I'm not a theologian. I'm not making this movie to prove a... or disprove. I'm not trying to expose him or exalt him. It's not a religious agenda, for goodness sake. I'm trying to... I'm trying to articulate something that hasn't been articulated. Him. Do you know what this opportunity feels like? It's like I found a natural fountain. A sudden spring, a bubbling up from a concrete floor, seven stories up from the ground. I don't care if it's impossible for water to flow up that high or to flow through concrete. I don't care that the water won't explain itself to me in hydrogen, oxygen terms. I expect the experience to be confusing and incomplete. But it's amazing. It'll be the closest I ever come to experiencing the reality of my own. If 
perceptions other than my own. And I'll tell about that as best I can. So you're saying it's okay to articulate a version of him that's alive. I'm saying I just want to articulate whatever he's expressing. Even if what he's expressing is a lie. Everyone lies. In every documentary you've made, they all lie at some point. But with them you could tell, and the viewer could tell what you knew. Then why don't we see any different? <laughs> Are you saying he's going to be too good at it? Good at what? I think I'm saying you're gonna look like a fool. Good at what? People who don't believe him will wonder why he wasted months working on a practical joke with the guy. Like, well, people who do believe him will wonder why he squandered this opportunity. Good at what? I am going for coffee. No, Nick, please. Do you think people will see it that way? Good at what? Lying. They lying for God's sake. Careful, Jay. Lying in a way that it is his job to catch and intelligently comment on. Richard is claiming not to mind because he's just documenting you bubbling up from the floor. I'm saying he's going to be discredited and generally mocked to death. It's still too early in the film to tell. It's certainly something to watch. Is that out. really your objection to his approach? There are too many conversations going on here. Only two? I'd say about eight. Somehow it seems like something's coming from every direction. Pandemonium. Exactly. Yes. Pandemonium. I'm going to put my foot down here, and I'm sorry if it ruffles people, but that's the way it's got to be, for a few minutes anyway. I'm going to ask questions of specific people, and only they are going to answer. And they're going to stop talking when they are done answering. All right, so, okay. to me. I would have worked up to that. Nick. Sorry. You have no idea the courtesy I extend to you by answering on your terms. What? My mind, my angelic grasp, it can hardly force the truth of me into the foolish limitations of a word like lying. The demonic answer to your question would be simultaneously dimensional and singular in its span of realities that you will never encounter. Dimensional? Dimensional. What? Well, I just thought he coined a new term, you know, for the demonic complexity, dimensional. You introduce an element of self-satisfied chaos into conversations that serve no one but me! Now I'm really going for that coffee. Sorry, Richard. Um, get me on my mobile when there's actual work to be done. Jacob? Thanks, Michael. It's great to be working with you again, by the way. Never stop saying so. He meant demotion as a way to break the tension. It wasn't meant in any way but to include you. Include me. Maybe someday we'll have a conversation about the number of ways you humanize your deities that serve no one but me. I don't serve you to the best of your knowledge. Okay, Richard, if I can't question him directly, he can't question my faith. Really? Did you think you could spend time with me and be tempted to only, what, eat chocolate? Of course I'm going to question your faith. You do your job and I'll do mine. Two plus two. The only thing that matters to me, really, the only thing, is that we go on working. Jacob. I told you what this was about when I asked you to do it. Have I ever kept anything from you? No. So either quit, now that you know he really is who I said he was, and that he's really going to act like that person, or stick around and let me work. Let us work, you too. It'll be good work. Okay. Uh, one more thing before I go quiet? Sure. Why are you doing this? Not to him. Did he tell you why he's doing this? I detest having my motives questioned. Okay. The point is, Richard, there's no reason for him not to act like himself. Is there? 
And he and I both know he didn't grow up by an unmarked road raised by Faulkner refugees. And so I won't ask. He doesn't have to answer. And he can spend the entire time I have a camera pointed at him, making noises with his teeth and pretending he went to prom. But what on earth is the point of that? <laughs> of why I rarely make jokes. It was my way of saying, yes, okay. I green light this project of telling my true history without analogy or allegory. What a shame Michael is not here to witness it. I shall narrate. I begin with the universe. I thought you said you'd abandon these self-created arguments. I feel very sure that is the last time you're going to talk during my narration. Do you? I begin with the universe. I existed before that, you understand. But my existence, as it is being expressed to and woefully misunderstood by you, began with the universe. To quibble about what I, therefore, means is a thesis worth of semantics for you. A punchline for me. But, lumino ergo sum. Is that you? It is. You think that's vanity casting? What happened to your face? The sort of handsomeness you see was taken from me by that when I left. Taken because it had no greater application to, or no, no deeper root in my person than as a symbol of conformity. Traces of which phenomenon linger in your cultures today, though working in ways you don't recognize. Uh... Does this pick up? I don't even understand the narrative. And where and how are we going to film handsomeness as conformity? Most suburban malls. This is a slideshow with narration by a professor of dead languages. We can include this with editing, but we need some action first. Do you have any footage from the creation? You want the highlight reel? You know about the garden, yes? You can show us the garden. Readily. Whose version? King James. No. Whose version? I'd be curious about what falls between, well, the fall <laughs> and the garden. There must be something. I did the not fall. You may call it the departure. Great. Okay. What did you do with yourself between the departure and the garden? Oh, come. You know the part you really care about. Do I? Is he revelations? <laughs> That'd be pretty visual, anyway. Those different colored horses and things in the sky. Technically, revelation is a prediction. You can't make a documentary about a drug-induced vision. I don't know. I've always been curious about the Ganarine swine. I'd like to film them rushing off the cliff. <laughs> Just not from directly below. No. The crucifixion. Now that's a story. No. The crucifixion? Uh, it's been kind of dull. Not correctly. And now it makes no impression on you. A man stands outside your White House and says unpopular things. There are already people who do this, correct? And one day the Secret Service takes this weak, smelly, breakable, nameless man 
and elevates him to eternal cultural status by publicly beating him bloody, sticking a spear into his side, and nailing his body in place to hold him still while he dies. And they achieve this while making you think that you wanted it too. Someone was shocking that would have been 20 years ago. I know. You said like you side with Jesus. I feel very sure there will be no more sentences like that one. What you don't know is that the director of the crucifixion was a man, unsurprisingly whose real, temporally, and culturally apt name, had it made it into that book, would have been mutilated by King James into something like... Reginald. What? Andrew, Simon, Mark, those swarthy Anglo-Saxon fishermen of the Galilean Sea. You should ask more questions. Huh. Hold all questions till the end. We need to get them to hate him until it's too late. Sure, sorry. Why not get Pilate to question him in private? So the Romans can work the crowd without an eruption? So he seems aloof, or at least, you know, distant. More told than his words. Yeah, like that. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, I know just the location for that. And we could we could shoot it from the mob's perspective. Like like there's this balcony and there's this, there's this fantastic silence, just flies buzzing, the heat. Well, flies. And a skewed perspective, empty spaces. And then, and then suddenly, he's saying, real power resides beyond. Or st stuff like that. And then he's gone. And he, he's appearing, disappearing. And, uh, and the people who like that, his magic, they're just going fucking bananas because it's too mysterious for them. We're gonna need fucking bananas. That's good, that's really good, because then when he's disappearing from the tomb. Well, when are we shooting that? Uh, Easter Sunday. Great. So when he disappears, some of them will be all, he's just doing it again, he's a show-off, we hate him. And it'll be their own hate, not even hate borrowed from someone else, right? It's not even the way that they were told to hate him, they get there on their own. It's a new and personal hate, you see? Right, that'll, that'll really separate the sheep from the goats, faith-wise, perfect. Wait a minute. Reginald's artistic coup on the day was setting the trial a good distance from Golgotha. Numerous benefits were gleaned from having the carpenter struggle along the road, not least of which was that it gave Reginald time to discredit his production assistant and have him crucified as well. The PA was the thief who did not enter the kingdom that day. Read your Luke. Reginald believed that his assistant was going to steal credit for his ideas, but I think you'll understand both the PA's hostility and his atheism up there on the left-hand cross, given what he'd been doing a mere six hours prior. that you think you understand. It was a very hot day, so there was a significant amount of sweating. A little known fact about the agony that is so often referenced is that a good portion of it stemmed from having sweat run down into the groin area. Because the knees were slightly bent, the sweat stream would slow in the fold of flesh between the hip joint and the crotch, a very sensitive area, very ticklish. Neither of you could withstand it for more than 20 seconds. The bizarre and inhuman juxtaposition of itching and excitement, utterly public excitement, but also unrelenting pain, the inconsolable wound and the imminence of death. Any time he tried to shift his hips, he felt the movement in the nails in his feet. For three hours. Yes. That was 15 seconds. 
you would have experienced that 720 times under a hot sun with everyone watching while the blood ran out of your body until you finally died. What does that have to do with you? You ask good questions. You must be very proud of your intellect. We are making a biography of you. What does any of this have to do with you? Who do you think hired Reginald? Shit. I'm going to go watch television. <laughs> what? My show is on. We'll work more tomorrow. Your show? Hi, I, I'd like to ask you, do you believe in the devil? Do you believe in going down? <laughs> Whatever. Look, no, just drop it. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Can you ever let any fucking thing go? It's not my it. It's not up to me to drop anything. You're the one who's pouting. I'm not pouting. I'm watching a movie. Not surprised you can't tell the difference. Okay, look. Just stop talking. Really. Well, am I pouting? I'm not pouting. The only thing I know either of you is doing is ruining my favorite scene. You've seen this like a thousand times. And that's how I know it's my favorite scene. Amazingly enough! If you put on any more mascara, your eyes will gum shut. Then I won't have to look at you. Which worst part of this show. Uh. <laughs> I know you voted for Ben. Oh, come on, Ben. Did she? I'm not stupid. Whatever else you might suddenly think about me. I don't vote off my allies. Mm -hmm. Maybe not until you f them senseless in the laundry room. Oh, well, you want to know what to write? If that were my standard, I would vote it off Walt after the first writer's meeting. Bull it. <laughs> no. Not all true. You wish it was bullshit. First week. And yeah, it was in the laundry room. You got that part right. On the dryer, in the basket, on your pretty little pink lace panties. Which, by the way, scratch when you use them as a cleanup towel. Stop. Stop. Pause, whatever it's called. Did Brandy vote off Ben? How come I don't remember? Well, you missed the beginning last week. I did? Uh, why didn't you unwind? Rewind? Rewind. Well, not to rub a sore spot, but you had just gone on at me about introducing chaos into conversations. Oh. And you called me self-satisfied. Yes, I did. If I had asked you to go back, would you have? Probably. It's not like it's the first time it's been said about me. Well, anyway, it's, it's much more enjoyable watching the show with someone. Did Brandy and Walt fornicate in the laundry? I don't remember that either. Well, it was episode one. It was before you got here. Just for no reason. They were both down there. It was hot. They bumped into each other and just started. It was like watching a sexual non sequitur. Though I have to say, as soon as they were into it, they certainly gave it their full and varied attention. A real homage to the Kama Sutra. Oh, please. They did this, the carnal laundry room part, knowing that they would be seen. Of course they did. These people live for that. Do you want to see it? I think I have that episode in here. Uh, no. It's sufficient to hear about it. To hear you talk about it. I never can tell what you mean when you say shit like that. It, it, the simplest sentence has a way of sounding threatening. It's one of my tools. If that were true, why tell me? Because that's one of my tools too.
I suppose if I make a tool pun, I get turned into a toad. More for joking than the joke itself. Huh. It's worse to laugh at you than insult you. Truth sicker. Ben got voted off last week. We were just watching the fallout in his alliance. You like this? That can't be surprising. Is that surprising? <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? I hadn't thought about it. It's so... I mean... I always thought of you as... vast. Consequential. Only doing big verbs. Striding. Damning. Grasping. Burning. Movies, yes. I can entirely see you watching Apocalypse Now. I understand. Reality television is the culmination of everything you artistic intellectuals loathed about sitcoms. People at their smallest, silliest, and most self-congratulatory. It's my fast food. <laughs> Certainly I could live on it, I hope not to live on it, but it's always available. And I'm always hungry. Do you watch with us? I just paused it to catch Stan up on some of the backstory. Stan? It seems homier than Satan. I have never had a home. You may call me Stan. I came in to see if you want to see some footage Jacob and I got earlier. What well, footage would you me? Oh, yes. There are other angles on the story. What other angles? I am the angle. Would you shoot? Come, look. Race you. Someone else's object lesson. That is my hope. I do have hopelessly outmatched. Free of all emotional cognizance except that of my own pose. Didn't catch that? Want me to say it again? Too late. Already its meaning is the meaning of you wondering at meaning. You will not get separate from that, even after you understand I promise. And that is not a word I use often. Wow. Somebody didn't do his yoga this morning. It's just a song. And love is just a chemical reaction to the impulse of procreate. Uh, why were you listening to it? I like it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's just watch some footage, okay? You were playing it to bother me. What? You sent Richard to get me and you put it on when you knew I was coming. How could you possibly be anything in the way of a tempter if you can't discern motives better than that? I see. It was a trap. What? You want to know what I can tell about you. Man, I know you're Satan and all, but you are one sad, paranoid sack. I guess it makes sense. I guess you expect everyone to be like you. I expect no one to be like me. <laughs> you know, Stan, I just realized something about you. What? You're perfectly alogical. It's like you don't care if you contradict your previous statement because it's stopped existing. <laughs> That's because he's the presence of opportunism, not his own person. Let's watch the footage. Now, all that stuff you showed us last week about how you were rejected at school, uh, in one moment it served you to come off sympathetic, the next you wouldn't stand for being perceived as someone who was rejected. Your attention spans aren't much longer. And you need your attention spans, whereas I don't need mine. So on balance, you're damning yourselves more than me. Yeah, but isn't there a truth involved? Were you or were you not ever rejected? What do you mean, we're damning ourselves? Time to watch the footage. Sure. Okay, okay. 
Right, sir? so much of my use of allegory in presenting a childhood. Hypocrites. My eyes are not red. I do not have a tail. I am not sulfurous. I am not a goat. I do not have claws. I do not lie away from one of your beds. What? What are you talking about? Nobody thinks you do that. I am not a snake. I do not have paws. I do not have hooves, cloven or otherwise. I do not live in fire. I am not, decidedly not, a human-animal hybrid with a taste for warm colors. I am the angel of my own heaven, and I do not have red eyes. Who thinks you lie under vents? <laughs> you know, if I had been in charge, I think I would have made his eyes empty. You know, something resembling emptiness. The lids slip open and it's impossible. Darkness, a black hole, the presence of nothing. Once she sees that, she's stuck because she can't look away until she's found something. And she will never find anything. Tomorrow you will be gone. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Exactly what it sounds like. I don't always have to lie for you to hear me. Why did you resort to symbolism after insisting that I be literal? I didn't. That woman told me. That woman must be a liar. You mean you don't recognize her? Her thyroid looks familiar. She remembers you. A woman named Finia, summer of 2000. Finia? That's the name she gave me. I didn't probe. But I don't know anyone named Finia. She remembers you. But I don't. You're not leaving that for Virginia. I probably will. What? What about the fountain? Bubbling up in defiance of gravity? I. She is no part of me. Well, you know, <clears throat> it's my film. <laughs> I capture the fountain, yes. But then I also look at what I think is needed show some context for the fountain, or opposing views, or whatever I think is part of my story of you. But I am the best, the only judge of me. But here, I am the only judge. What to say about you? Can we go back to my being going to borrow? <laughs> it's all right. You are right. I'm have a close bite. He's, you know, some other person's justification for the existence of human evil. He's a tool for whatever argument you want to make. Now, he used to be considered as having his own existence, a, a coherent personhood, if you will, and, uh, you know, one that people took seriously, even if they didn't particularly like all the details. It's much in the way you think of your spouse, you know? Um, I don't like their table manners. I, I, I don't like the way they fight. Whatever it is. Mm. But you don't for a minute think that just because of the enlightenment, you can be rid of those features of your spouse. Mm. 
you make a daily decision to stay in relations with your spouse as an entity, as a separate entity, but the devil is now only as relevant as you want him to be. He's a convenience. He's reshapeable. Does that matter? Well, only if people insist on talking about and being interested in the devil. But they do seem to want to have it all their way. I mean, whenever somebody brings up the devil or you know, puts him in a movie, uh, it's always incomplete. It's like they want to talk about Richard Nixon and Asia, but only with reference to China, and they're hoping that nobody remembers Vietnam or, or Vietnam, and therefore all of his accomplishments in China don't count. The human mind has been trained out of bothering to reconcile its thoughts to the whole. The, but the whole what? Well, sadly, the whole anything, but... Uh, in this context, the whole, let me give you an example. For some people, the definition of the devil is the opposite of God. They see a struggle, and depending on their personal philosophies, an uneven struggle, or if they've gone too deep into your Byron, then a David and Goliath struggle that is emblematic of humankind's hatred of authority. Go devil! But the fact that in this faith system, the devil was the adversary of Michael and not of God, and that he and Michael were created for the story to illustrate that obedience to real majesty is sublime, well, that's of no note, you democracy junkies fixed on your point. The devil is a useful image. You're not interested in his biography. You just, and this is often the case, want to refute God. Well, I don't, but I see how that struggle is important to a lot of people. Well, then they should refute him with their own thoughts. Don't misappropriate and recharacterize the symbolic detritus of a religion you don't even believe in. I mean, the failure of logic is so large, I can't even begin to describe it. So, you don't relate at all to the struggle against authority? I do. And I appreciate those who have done it on behalf of humankind, but the devil did not struggle for us. He didn't try to overthrow authority for us all. He was petulantly aware of his own lack of status within that hierarchy. He, he's not our rebel hero. He, he's not some astral Che Guevara. In fact, one of the main reasons given for his rebellion was that he was hostile to the sovereignty being given to man. I mean, you know, according to that mythology. Now, either abandon that mythology and its characters entirely, because after all, you're not being obliged to believe in them, or acknowledge that the devil is not a human ally. Then what is he? He's nothing. He doesn't exist. I mean, he's just a tool. What if he did exist, though? Well, then he is the best joke that ever got played on humans. I mean, think about it. Pretending it's true then it's the story of someone's petulance completely changing the size of our values. God throws out the devil. The devil is reduced to a size that makes people hostile to mystery. The devil wins us over because we can understand him, and we resent God because he's too large to be seen and understood, and then we think God is hostile to us because he's too large. I mean, it gets kind of silly, don't you think? You talk about them as if you know them. Are you sure you don't believe in God and the devil? Please. I believe in understanding the implications of your thoughts before you speak them. That is it. That's my only faith. Okay. So if you suddenly popped up, if you really did exist, would you be afraid? No, I don't think so. I think I would probably congratulate him on running the most successful campaign of misdirection in human history. So, I have to tell you, you're not the only person I'm interviewing who claims to be the devil. <clears throat> truly. Yes, truly. I spent a lot of time and some footage on a man who makes a pretty good case for himself. And my assistant is out today talking to yet another man who said he had proof. So, this is some sort of job interview? Well... You always wanted to be in pictures, yes. You mock me! I think I might have been mocking me. Don't they seem different to you?
Obviously, the proof that I am the devil himself is that I put you off so much, yes? Well, this whole notion that the devil would be charming. Don't you find that just a little suspicious? A little humanist revisionist? You sound like my DP. So if you scorn me and find me ridiculous, what does that say? That you are ridiculous. So you're saying you actually possess people? Of course. I'm... I... I'm the devil. The song was mine. And so on. I don't know. I never really think about the devil copying to it after it's over. Uh, I guess because he loses. I mean, you lose. You always get exercised. I think you'd keep quiet about it. Well, it's not in the nature of my work for you to hear about my successes. In that way, I'm kind of like the CIA. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, why don't you tell me about them? The, uh, the successes, I mean. Uh, first of all, why aren't you still there? What do you mean? Well, if you're in possession of someone, don't you have to stay there? Until they die, yes. You can't step out for a quick damning or anything? It's just sit inside this screaming, vomiting person for as long as it takes? Well, yes. Well, how do you pass the time in someone you're possessing? Well, usually there's some family member on hand who's yelling and trying to drive me out. Yeah, well, that has to get old. Oh no, that's challenging. Human love is a powerful force. It's expelled me from more than one subject. So I've got to keep my focus when that's going on. Downtime for me is when a priest is there doing his whole praying and sprinkling routine. <laughs> you make it sound like he pees on you. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? And I wouldn't put it past the clergy. <laughs> and maybe that would have more effect, come to think of it. I mean, <laughs> the priests making the sign of the cross with their, um... I'd leave. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, during the ritual, you can relax a bit. Right. And that's where I get to learn more about you all. Ah. Oh. I get to experience information with all the five senses and, you know, in time, the way you do. Uh, see, uh, confusion, odors, waiting, they're all so interesting. You don't normally experience those? Of course not. I'm an astral being. With corporeal form. An illusion. And a little flab. A satanic deception. Excuse me. Richard, hey, are you done already? I am. I think Stan is the real deal. I don't know, I think Floyd here is pretty credible. Floyd says hi. Give him to me. And he wants to talk with you. Should I? Yeah, I think it would be best. Your mother sucks cocks in hell! See? Yours is no better than mine, is he? I have no basis for comparison. True. Why have you given up so quickly? There was a quality that I didn't know to expect that I now know is absent. Yeah, I'm having the same experience, uh, but I think it would be best if we um, maximized our resources for the purposes of a fuller report. I understand. So, I am talking to the devil. Yes, don't you think? I do. Yes, and I am actually talking to the devil. Got it. Call me later. Okay. Oh, uh, hey, Richard, have you talked to Michael today? I gave him a few days off so we could do this. I have damned people for keeping me waiting this long. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Even after what Stan said to him about being gone, Stan wouldn't hurt Michael. Uh, excuse me? Stan is, uh... Yeah, Stan, Stan would hurt Michael. Stan is Stan, and he would hurt Michael. We've been over this, Jake. I think you take a far too old-fashioned view of Stan. We're wasting time. One of us should call Michael. I'll call him. Now? Yes, all right, now. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, yes, I'm damned. I'll hurry. Don't worry about the flab. I'm over the flab.
Yeah. Tell me where you were during the crucifixion. Pardon me? Okay, or tell me why on earth you would use the word pardon. It's an expression. Really? How can there be any part of you that is culturally habitual? The sow is mine! <laughs> Boy, you were actually a pretty nice guy. Do you understand that under no circumstances is the devil a pretty nice guy? Al Pacino and fine suits and all that bullshit aside, the devil, the actual, real deal devil, would be intolerable company for humans. Conservative Christian dogma. Why? I, I don't mean intolerable because we've been taught to hate him by priggish men in robes. I mean something more personal and, and basic. I mean real antipathy. Right? Intolerable physically. Biologically. Uh, having nothing in common. Right? No purposes, no perspectives, not even the same linguistic structures that make up language because of having none of the same reasons for communicating. A conversation between a human and the devil would be like a conversation between a muscle spasm and a duck. I'm just misunderstood. You may be, sure. But under what construct of faith would the devil merely be misunderstood? See, a religion need not have created him in the first place if he's just a surly and salvageable uber-human. The devil is the place where charity can neither be practiced nor received. That is not a human condition. Richard, yeah. He must have gone away. I know I would if I had a few days off. He's not answering? Did you tell him to call you? My reign shall be a blood and fire. Your virgin shall be mine! Virgins of what? Virgins. He's after the virgins. Virgins? No self-respecting devil wants a virgin. That's a myth. Thanks for the tip, Floyd. Did you tell him to call you? Did he say devils don't want virgins? Their innocence is mine. Their purity is mine. Nothing shall be left uncorrupted. Virgins are a big waste of time. Trust me. Everybody, uh, shut up! Even imitators, so discord. It's very tiring. Did you leave a message? They just rang? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not like Michael. Well, he's on vacation. Uh, Richard, you were doing it again. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> he's possessed, not a possessor. Yeah, he says you got a faker on your hands. Oh, there's a devil there. But he's not the one doing the talking. I'm gonna drive to the hospital. You pack on him if you think it's so crucial. I promise you, he'll be soaking in the hot tub and the phone will be off. Do you believe in the devil? Are you kidding? That's like asking me if I believe that the world rests on the back of a giant turtle. This was very effective in the Middle Ages. The sun going out. You can't make the sun go out. I can't? No. Oh. You don't have any physical powers. You're not a creator. You're a parasite. Huh, then why is it dark? I don't know. Good timing? Your specialty, opportunism? Yes, but why? Why is it dark? Because sometimes darkness comes. An eclipse? I suppose. I am not occluded, which matters more than not being included. Lumino ergo sum. A clucifer. A good magician could have done any of this. So. A good magician needs a good audience. I only need you. Is that supposed to make me feel special? I don't know. Something for you to think about, not me. Not for you to think about, or something for me to think about in lieu of thinking about you? You are not my target. 
Is it everyone your target? I go one at a time. That's a lie. Anything I say might be a lie, and you insist on asking me questions anyway. I don't remark on that because it's unusual or you're special, mind you. Wait, excuse me, I gotta go. <gasps> to Michael's? Yes. Do you want to know how I know where you're going? I assume it's because we're right around the corner from where he's staying. You rely on rational explanation a lot for a man of faith. Great, excuse me. Michael isn't home. You have been there? Again with the rational worldview. Don't you think I might have divined it? No. You will find Michael in pieces around his home. So perhaps you would call it lying that I said he was not at home, but it is the he that was he who is no longer at home. The Michael of Michael will never be there again. But any of his parts are available for a visit. His head is in the kitchen, though not recognizable as such. You might confuse it with the jam. Because Michael was British, there was a lot of jam. Let go of me. All right. Michael is enjoying a new level of incoherence, of the chaos he relished so. Maybe I can't create. But anyone can rip. Victoria? Quickly, I assure you. Another neglected fact, I don't need you to suffer. I just need you to lose. That's a lie. Well, I need some people to suffer, that's true, if that's their way to damnation. But I don't need it, per se. Where are you going? To Michael's. Really? Yeah. Somebody needs to call an ambulance. And he deserves to have a friend be with him, to be the last to see him. Will you actually reassemble him? Shut up. All right. Why, Michael? Just because you said your eyes could be represented by black holes. Because he was ready. Do you believe in the devil? Wow, um, absolutely, I do, I do. I've kind of thought about that a lot, strangely. What I've boiled it down to is, the devil is like a virus. He's not really alive himself, but he's living off of us, like unstoppably living off of us. What I can't figure out, the question I'm always asking myself is, were viruses made so we could better understand the possibility of the devil, or did the devil create viruses? I think that's one of those questions we have to wait to find out. I have, I have a lot of questions when I die. I hope that helped. Good, thank you. Michael is dead. What? Michael is dead. You will know me by my processes, not by what you recognize as biography. As a people, you might consider applying that definition of personality to yourselves, but I don't worry about that happening anytime soon. How did he die? Where is he? Are you sure? You ask too much. Hold your questions until the end. I want to go work on the film. It's going to be groundbreaking, Richard. He's not dead. What are you talking about? Michael is not dead. I lied. I just want to check in with both of them now. Don't call the cameraman. Call Michael if you must. But he is not dead. He's probably in the hot tub and his phone is turned off. Hi, excuse me, do you have time for a question? Do you have time for a question? Do you, do you believe in the devil? Do you believe in the devil? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
the giddy vulgar as their fancies guide, with noise say nothing, and in parts divide. Poe, poe, poe. O wretched countryman, what fury reigns? What more than madness has possessed your brains? Think you the Grecians from your coasts are gone? And I Ulysses arts no better know. Foes, fraud, force, engines, walls, etc. Da da, da da, ta tiddly se zera, ke se ra, se ra. Plethora, perforce. Trust not their presence, nor admit the horse. What do you mean, nothing? It's empty. But where is he? When's the last time you tried calling him? The fact is, you let it affect the scene. Now, you don't have to agree with me. I'm talking about the focus group feedback. I'm talking about numbers. You didn't do your job. You didn't stay objective. You weren't true to yourself. What you're struggling to say, extremely well-presented blonde man, is that every human being is the single worst judge of his or her own impact on others, but always confuses impact with self-definition, and self-definition with self-worth. It's a mailbox full. How can it be full? It wasn't even rolling over. No one could leave a message. Did you ever get through? No. I think audience panelist number six summed it up best. If I wanted my comedy TV mixed up with thinking and pain, I'd watch my shows with my in-laws. He said he tore him? Graphically. Remember how mad he was about allegory? Maybe he's just trying to scare us. Keep us guessing whether he's being literal or not. Are you scared? <laughs> what do you mean? You don't seem scared. You seem concerned and, and conflicted, but not scared. I think if the devil wanted to scare you, you'd be scared. What, are you scared? No, but I pray. He knows I have no spiritual reason to fear him. And for me, that's, that's all that matters in, in the long run. <laughs> I don't follow. If you're not afraid, and I'm not afraid, then what did he gain? I mean, he always has to gain. You know, it may have been a threat, in a way that we don't recognize. I think we should consider the possibility that you can be apparently honest, but mean things we don't understand. Come see. Oh, Jesus! Art, while pretending to be life, accidentally imitated itself. What? Come in, come in. You'll laugh, which I know you like doing. Come up to the workroom. Stand. We can't just come in. Why not? Oh, must I tempt you across the threshold? Okay, let's see me here. There are brownies. That's a lie, there aren't any brownies, but if you're not tempted by the prospect of heavy cultural irony, I don't know what else to say. He means, whether here or there, we can't act like nothing's happened. Nothing has happened. Nothing. Nothing has happened. Or put differently, that which has happened, since it is no longer happening, is now nothing. The only something is occurring right now, and it's the question of whether you'll come upstairs and enjoy the collision of high and low art. Come on, Richard. It's like you said. There's an apocalypse now on the television. Where's Michael? I don't know. He's not here. That much I know. That's something that's happened, is my point. Well, then you should have said so. We can't act like nothing's happened. That's what Richard means. We can't keep acting like nothing's happened when you told me that you ripped Michael and now he's missing. That's what you do all day. Every time you eat for pleasure instead of hunger, you're pretending nothing happened in a world full of starving people. 
Every time you allow someone to say they love you, you're pretending nothing happened in a world where you are nothing more than a slowly rotting sack of bile to whom love has no greater chance of attaching than to a gust of swamp gas. Right now, both of you are acting like nothing happened with respect to so many things that even I might have difficulty counting them. And I, I don't need to remind you, have angelic capabilities which include math. I know all your sins and lapses. Do you really want me to list them? Which some things that have happened are we ignoring, and which are we bound to? What sins? We're bound to the ones that are not resolved, and that are our responsibility. Really? So I can sit here and refuse to respond coherently, screwdriver, fox maggot, until you've accounted for all your unresolved happenings? I'm not accountable to you. You will be. And without a doubt, I am not accountable to you for Michael. That has to be the one thing that I and you agree on. What? That salvation and damnation are private. Good. Come look at the television. Everyone stop talking! Why? So I can think. So I can think about what to do about you. What are your options? I still have some say in this project. Of course. I wasn't being rhetorical. What is the list of things that you're thinking to do about me? Well, who are you? One. Ask you to leave. Two. Call the police. Ooh, three. Well, I guess that's it. Four. Get back to work on the film. I like number three, Richard. Let's call the police. Wait. spiritual pride again. I was defending him. I know all his family and all his cattle die. Kind of like a hamlet with livestock. And we're supposed to think of him as patient. Job, not hamlet. Do you mean I'm supposed to be patient? Come upstairs and give me what I want. And you will get what you want. Really, those are the only terms. Richard. see this besides me. What? True sitcom? You had Michael watch this with you. Leave that topic. Watch this. He's called a host. Isn't that wonderful? It means if you were blessed, you could eat him with a little grape juice and call it a day, grace wise. If an audience member is thinking about serious drama while you're stirring soup with a dildo, you might be in the wrong line of work. So, I have to tell you. Brand. Dariah. Brandy has been
been written off. What? See you in syndication. No, 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 no. Let's take a look back at some of our favorite moments uh, with Jazz. Stop! Those motherfuckers don't know what they're watching. Was that uh, here voted or anything? Your fellow actors had no say in this? No. No. I've said this before. You know that. You've got an audience panel that doesn't understand anything about how to create a scene. I mean, not a thing. I don't care about them. I don't them. care about them. They're my competition. Of course they're going to vote against me. Duh. But Jasmine is fucking funny. I'm funny. This show needs a panel that understands that I am funny for the scene, in the scene, not like some self-important ass clown who's beamed in from a 1960s sitcom like, oh god, laughing, god, to just mug at the camera and poke her head through holes in the wall. Hey, I am not the producer who decided that I create the best reaction <gasps> shots. Maybe if you spent any time thinking about anything besides yourself, you might actually have a reaction too, you know, that might be funny. But when you're all action and no point of view, you're comically fucked. And sparked by this unprecedented moment of perspicacity, Bitch. the comic no, no, wish. Wait, no! Ah. You can't tell me this qualifies as meeting God. No, far from it. What do you see? People I hope never to meet. Blur your focus. Look at it as a whole. Don't see them as individuals. Oh, I guess it looks a little like that sculpture. I think it's called the Laocoon. I want yes. you to include it in our film. Why? Why? Laocoon defied his gods. Laocoon angered Athena, so she sent the serpents, and they wound their scaly cells around his sons. And bit them? And when Laocoon tried to save his sons, they squeezed him to death. So you think I should... Check! I wouldn't touch him, detective. He's done something with his skin that can cause you to burn if you touch him. Wanna feel? Sir, stand still. Keep your hands to your side. Jane, what did you tell him? Are you here to arrest me? I'm hoping we'll come to that. I'd appreciate it if you come down to the station voluntarily to answer some questions. Certainly. I enjoy answering questions. As long as they're not about my reasons. <laughs> What they're not telling you is that they're not sure whether the Miranda rights apply. Or what would happen to me in a holding cell. Because I am what you would call the devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. I know you believe in me. Or anyway, you did. Once. Do you remember? Watching Desmond Vance in the snow, gasping like a terrified fish. You thought it was a fish, and you thought it was okay because you were better than he was. And then you took it up. No, but I won't belabor the topic of Desmond. Except to say, he lives with me now. He doesn't say hi. You are at a crisis point, Detective Fitzgerald. What the hell is going on here? The crisis is this. You can leave. One. You can try to arrest me, during which I will almost certainly possess you. And I happen to know that you would be very, very easy to damn, since you are already so, so close. Two. 
Or you can wait here while I fulfill my word to this man, after which I will ride with you in your cruiser. And I will answer all the questions you have about your wife. Well, to eat God. He's gonna let me see God. You don't believe in God. I don't disbelieve in God. <laughs> and if I see him, I'm perfectly prepared to believe in him. If you to see him, the word believe doesn't mean anything. Spiritual snob. If that can appear to people in their dishcloths and yams, that can appear to Richard in the workroom. What makes you think that is only for you rigorous, dogmatic pricks? The devil can't get you access to God. He can't even call him God. Ask him to, to use the word, to, to use the name. He's cosmically separate from God. I see God. Do you want to? How can you possibly think this is a good idea? Are you kidding me? Who would say no to this? To meet God? Who besides you would say no? Goodbye, Richard. So what? What? You have become unanswerable. I had no idea how much your differences mattered. If he possessed a modicum of the Christian charity he had might stay here instead of abandoning you to what he thinks is your doom. This isn't my, you're not gonna. No, 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 no. Then how could we ride in the cruiser? Right. Sorry. Don't give it another thought. Come out. Come on out. You can join us. That's very generous of you. Maybe it is. But right now I need the space here.
I'm not. I'm here to make an arrest. Shh. Is this how you prepare yourselves? <sighs> Does anyone know why we're meeting God? I don't know why you are. For me, it's part of the deal I made with him. <laughs> with the devil? I hope you play a mean fiddle. <laughs> no, no, a business deal. We're collaborating. think that, but no, I'm not Michael. Are we supposed to just ask questions? I think we're supposed to just be here. There are no prepared remarks. This meeting is for you all to use as you see fit. Richard, primarily. Hence the form of that. Richard, why don't you start us off? Well, hello? Why do you look like Michael? I have to look like someone. If I assume the traditional, more stereotypical guys, you just ask why I look like Ian McKellen. <laughs> it's Michael. Dang. I would suggest using this time for questions that only that can answer. You will find out about Michael with a little patience on the 10 o'clock news. Oh, well. Think. Oh, oh, can I go? Sure. Please, I can't get my thoughts in order. Um, um. Can you make a stone <clears throat> so big that even you can't lift it? That's actually a good question, Randy. I, I heard a sermon about that once. Can you? What did the priest giving the sermon say? He said the question was designed to make us dynamically understand that we can't understand you. Yes, well, I hope that's rid us for once and all of the fiction of an infallible clergy. <laughs> The answer to the question is yes. I can make a stone so big that I can't lift it. It's not about the paradoxical limits of omnipotence. It's a metaphor for free will. Oh. That's smart. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? Which parts of the Bible aren't true? <laughs> That's why he's got the job he's got. Seems like an unfair question. That's the same as saying you presume most of the Bible is false, and that would be anthropological egg on my celestial face. Oh. oh. Not unlike the stone. Sure, accuracy and fairness? Well, then, can the rest of us just ask our question first, then go? See? They never want to really know the answers to their questions. In their perfect world, the truth would just be everything that's already in their brains. Fortunately, this is far from their perfect world. No, that's not the Bible. That is a document I prepared for you. An annotated Bible, if you will. Explaining with respect to each line for whom 
and in what time it was true and why. You can keep it, David. I don't need it back. Thank you. Okay, Mike. Is there any way to be sure that we're forgiven? I, I mean, let's say we miss repentance by one Hail Mary. Would you let us know? You just have to know what you mean when you think. I, I'm not quite sure I followed that, sir. Repentance is not dieting, it's eating right. Well, I haven't always eaten right. Undoubtedly. But it's not a goal number, it's more of a commitment to health. I'm sorry that's not clear to you, but perhaps if you think about it, in time it will be. I will tell you that the reason it's not clear to you now is that you wanted me to say that you were forgiven, absolutely. And my refusal to do so feels like a punishment. So think about that too. Sir. I never enjoyed those two-part reviews either. No, I'm all right. Okay, I have mine. How did he even approach you for this? And how come you let him approach us? Are we even safe? First of all, those are significantly different questions. No, you are not safe. Why should you be safe? What does safety have to do with my plan for you? What precedent is there in the human condition for you to believe that I value your safety? Those are significantly different questions, too. Dariah! No, don't worry. I enjoy rhetoric. The spirited debate is a lost art. They are different questions, and that's why I asked you all of them. Fair enough. And how did he approach you? You can't think, given how you spend your time on television, that proximity and antipathy are mutually exclusive. Yeah, but you have better life options than I do. There is nothing about the distance between he and I that is spatial. I feel like you're not answering me. I agree. I will never give up hope that the stone might lift itself. Okay. I think I finally had him right. Is it a mistake to collaborate with the devil on my film? That question has no meaning. What do you mean? Of course it does. I'm making a film about him. He is collaborating with me on it. Is that a mistake on my part? It doesn't matter how often you ask it, there will still be no answer to the question, can this duck conjugate celery salt? What? Exactly. All right, I think we're done here for now. I do hope to see you all again soon. Would it be too much to exit on a wave of Bach? Yes. Same as it ever was. All right. Everybody back where they belong. Brandy, Dariah, back to your self worth crisis. I don't know. I'm not feeling as aggrieved as I was. It's not live, it's taped. Nothing we can do about it now. Check this out. The seven days of creation jives with angelic perception of time. That's why it makes no sense to us. So, did all those patriarchs really only live to be 80? No, wouldn't it be the opposite? If one day is a hundred years, then that means they would... They're still alive. We, no, uh, starting in chapter five, it's, it's in uh, human time. Uh -huh. uh, apparently the first line of the chapter signals a conceptual shift occurred. That sounds confusing, but kind of fun, like a riddle. 
What about Leviticus? I would have started reading with Leviticus. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. Go, go, really? go. You may go. I wish you the best of luck maintaining your interest in complexity. Possible for water to flow up that high or to flow through concrete. I don't care that the water won't There's explain so itself to me and hide I expect the experience to be confusing and incomplete. What? I can't be damned. Your brain vegetated by trusting nothingness. Large, not with thought but with disproportionate images of trivial excitements and haphazard meaning. Discolored, though not inedible to me, by the seeping confusion caused by never acknowledging that you expected truth to come to you, but would have disdained both its approach and its tawdry humility. Money? No, no. Do you believe in the devil? The devil? Really? What do you mean, believe? Do you believe in the devil? Do you believe there is a devil? No. Come on. What about uh, The Exorcist? You ever seen it? Sure. sure. I've seen those steps, too, in Georgetown. Ugh. And my friend Stephanie, she lives in PG County. She showed me the abandoned lot where it really happened. You know, where the kid really lived. I mean, the house is gone now. It burned down. No lie. Somebody built a playground there. You know, because the grass wouldn't grow and who's going to live there? So all they could do is put those wood chips there. You know, over the dead earth, some swings, a, a slide. I always thought, how weird is that? You know, kids playing there. Why shouldn't they? The devil weren't really there. Well, sure, but... But what? Did the film scare you? <laughs> Are you kidding? I couldn't sleep without the lights for like weeks. Even though it can't be true. Well, if it were true, it would suck. Yeah. Well, if the devil did exist, if you were right here, right now, what would you ask him? To go away. Fair enough. But, but if he weren't going to hurt you, he's on his lunch break, what would you want to know? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, why does he make people puke green stuff? Okay. Thank you for your time. No, 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 no. I know, scratch that. I'd ask him if he misses heaven. <laughs> 